whenever there's a new camera i love to come to venice beach because venice beach has all the ingredients for me to show you what a camera can do and usually in those videos it starts with a sunrise where i'm walking towards the camera and there's a reason why i do that first of all you get to see the dynamic range and the image quality but more importantly you get to witness how a camera's auto focusing system performs that is why usually i bring a lot of sony cameras here because the sony cameras can do all of that every single time really good and that is why I returned my Panasonic GH5 years ago and switched to Sony A6500. Because Panasonic cannot do this. Until now. This is Panasonic Lumix S5 Mark II. This 24 megapixel full frame sensor camera has, drum roll please, phase detection autofocus. 779 of them. I mean, look at this. Right now it's set to the most responsive one. But come on. This is a Panasonic. Look at the penny boy. And the best part about this is that there is no magical setting that you have to fiddle and find to make the autofocus work. This autofocus works every single time, just like how we deal with autofocus on our Sony cameras. So now the Panasonic owners can stop pretending like the autofocus is for amateurs and enjoy and enjoy being able to move around while you're filming something. Okay, back to specs. This camera can shoot full frame 10-bit 420 H.265 videos up to 6K 30 frames per second, which has 3 by 2 aspect ratio, or 10-bit 422 H.265 Cinema 4K videos up to 30 frames per second, or 10-bit 422 H.264 1080p videos up to 120 frames per second. If you like to record higher than 30 frames per second above 1080p, then the camera switches to APS-C mode and lets you shoot videos up to Cinema 4K 60 frames per second. It shoots in Vlog which gives you 14 plus stop dynamic range. You can install your own LUTs and even bake them into the footage. It has dual ISO, it can shoot up to 9 frames per second, 200 plus raw photos, it takes dual SD memory cards up to UHS-2, it has full-sized HDMI, USB-C 3.2 generation 2 port with power delivery, headphone and microphone jacks, 3.6 million dot viewfinder, 3x2 3, 3 inch flip out screen and some grills to take care of feet. Lumix S5 Mark II weighs 740 grams and it costs $1,999. So I guess the question is, is it any good? Pay attention to this upcoming shot. This was done in one take and Lumix S5 Mark II was set to autofocus and it didn't miss the focus even one time. Here's the shot.
hold on, hold on, hold on. If you know me, you know that I don't put disclaimers on my videos unless they're sponsored because that's what the law requires. If there's no disclaimer, the video is not sponsored. You don't have to say it is not sponsored. It's the same reason why I don't go home and when I walk into my house, I don't turn to my wife and say, hey, nice to see you. Just so you know, I didn't cheat on you today. Or as I'm walking out of the store, I don't turn around and say as I'm walking out, hey, I didn't steal anything. Or as I'm shaking someone's hand, I don't say, just so you know, after the bathroom, I washed my hands, no need to wear. But this was a different experience. Panasonic did something mind-blowing to show us this camera. Ring, ring, ring. Hello? What's that? You need me in Tokyo, Japan? I'll be right there. Let's go. Okay, we made it. We're here. We are in Tokyo, Japan. Yes. Are we zooming in or zooming out? What are we doing? In order to realize this goal, we have tried to focus on innovation, reliability, and value. Look at that. Look at all those goodies. Oh, wow. Just act camera. casual. Hey, just act casual. Oh, yeah. Just, nothing to see. Nothing. Hello. Don't mind me. Don't yeah, mind I'm me. Even inviting me back. Oh, I, I know you. You know me. Oh my. Yeah. 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 <laughs> what do you think? I, I think it's amazing. I mean, adding the face detection is like the first step in making it more uh, more appealing to a wider crowd than, than just Panasonic uses. So after we got the cameras and a little bit of goodies in the bag, a memory card, they said, oh, also now you can go back to the same room and grab prime lenses and 70 to 200 millimeter lens and everyone went uh-huh and, and then sean who was doing the announcement he's he said we have the entire f1.8 series lenses the 18 24 35 50 and 85 millimeter as well as a 70 to 200 millimeter f4 the s pro lens available for you all to take home with you alongside the s5 mark ii that makes a very big deal because now I have a really good arsenal of lenses to show you what the camera can do. One thing they missed, in my opinion, was the microphone. They didn't give us a microphone, they didn't mention us to bring a microphone and as a Sony shooter, my microphone doesn't work with other cameras. Actually, I could have bought something from the camera shops over here but then it's gonna be redundant because I have most of the microphones I need the next day they took us around they gave us a really nice tour of the city there was a lady I cannot forget uh, June Junko she taught us about the history of Japan as we were driving around and then they took us to a lot of places in an incredible amount of time I feel tears well in So yeah, that happened. 
But just like my good friend Gerald says, no money exchange hands. They don't get to see this video before it is released. They will be seeing it with you. They have no influence on what I'm saying. There are no limitations to what I can or cannot say. Also, I'm shooting 99% of this video with this camera. And if the autofocus is not performing as, as they're saying, you'll be able to see it in this video. All right, now, of course, we have to talk about autofocus and how it performs on this camera. Besides you being able to see that it performs just fine, just the way it should, I also took some time to compare it to my beloved Sony A7, uh, Sony A7 IV because I feel like this camera and A7 IV are kind of head to head. And when it comes to autofocus comparison, this guy wasn't behind. But is it as good as A7 IV? To find out, I grabbed my external monitors and started testing. First of all, I want to show you something. When I have the info output turned on, so it shows the information here. As you can see, I lost the screen on Sony. And also, Panasonic spread out a little nicer compared to what's happening with Sony. This is wider. However, it's really difficult to read what is happening, whereas in Sony, everything's clear, but while the information is turned on, as you can see, I still can see the screens on both screens, including, you know, Panasonic's back screen. And when I go to menu, even though the menu appears fully here, it appears like that on the external screen, which is really nice. When I go to menu here, it's just menu. There's nothing happening on Sony's screen. So that's kind of an advantage for Panasonic. First, I set both cameras to default autofocus speed and started testing. As you can see here, Sony a7 IV performs as it should and it catches the human as fast as it can and locks the focus perfectly every single time. Of course, that kind of focusing has to be a walk in the park for Sony cameras at this point. So now let's look at how our Panny Boy is performing. Lumix S5 Mark II performs really, really good, especially compared to my GH5 and focuses on the subject pretty accurately. However, misses the focus in some shots, even though the monitor seems to be showing that the camera knows that there's a person over there. This is where Lumix kind of fell behind compared to A7 Mark IV. When you watch them side by side, it becomes more apparent how decisive Sony is. Lumix is not far behind, but in this test, it is not as good as a7 IV. This is where Lumix really struggled quite a lot. I also realized that when part of your face is covered, Lumix S5 Mark II stops focusing on the eye and switches to the subject that is closer. When we try the same thing with Sony A7 IV, Sony keeps the focus on the eye even though the face is obstructed with hand. Same thing happens when your mouth is covered as well. Lumix S5 Mark II just switches the focus to the thing that is closer to the camera. Sony A7 IV passes this test as well. So everything seems to be going good for Sony until I asked my wife to put on a hat, glasses and mask. That's when A7 IV stopped realizing that that was a person. So it lost the eye out of focus and it started focusing on the hood of the hat, which is something we do not want. But then it started focusing back on the subject's eyes. However, on the monitor, it wasn't showing subject as a human or it wasn't marking its eye and where it's supposed to be. Whereas 5 Mark II was marking the person without a problem. But of course, the disadvantage of A7 IV not recognizing the human is when there's something in front of the subject, it focuses on that. Lumix kind of did better in this test, but then eventually it focused on the hand as well. 
And then I did a test where I walked in front of the subject and that caused some drama with Lumix S5 Mark II but then it recovered quickly where A7 Mark IV quickly went back to the subject. By the way, you can slow down focus shift and avoid this completely if you like. When I walked back, this time A7 IV kept the focus on me until I left the scene where S5 Mark II went back to the subject with no problems at all this time. And when you move close and away from the camera rapidly, in the standard settings A7 IV seems to be catching up with the subject better. Lumix S5 Mark II is not bad and the footage is usable, but it is still always a little behind compared to A7 IV. But when I set the autofocus speed and sensitivity to maximum on both cameras, this time Lumix S5 Mark II performed as well as Sony A7 Mark IV and didn't miss the subject at all. Now what I want to do is, I want to get on my one wheel. I don't know what the situation is, it's been raining here and today the weather is changing quite rapidly. But I want to get on my one wheel and go around and see what we can capture and talk about more stuff like the stabilization, the rolling shutter and resolution games. Let's go. Okay, now let's talk about stabilization because when it comes to stabilization, S5 Mark II is remarkable. It has three stages of stabilization in case you don't know the Panasonic cameras. It has the in-body image stabilization and an electronic stabilization on top of that and then boost. And boost is for when you're just pointing the camera to somewhere. The boost doesn't work while you're panning or, you know, do it sweeping shot or when you're moving around. But besides that, uh, electronic image stabilization adds 8% crop, only 8% crop on top of the footage, which is really good. As you can see, I'm using it right now. The arm's length with 18 millimeter lens, in-body image stabilization and electronic image stabilization turned on on top of it. I think this is great and even when you're running I still see that rocking left and right which was one of the things that I didn't enjoy much with my GH5. In this shot Sony is set to standard which is an in-body image stabilization and Lumix S5 Mark II is set to normal which is its own in-body image stabilization and as you can see Lumix is already doing much better job in stabilizing the footage. When Sony a7 IV is set to active mode, which is still an in-body image stabilization, the footage becomes much more stabilized. And when we add electronic image stabilization on top of Lumic S5 Mark II's in-body image stabilization, the footage becomes even smoother. However, compared, they both look pretty good and usable to me. What do you think? And when it comes to running, besides the rocking left and right, I think Lumix S5 Mark II did a better job compared to Sony A7 Mark IV. But the advantage Sony has is Catalyst Browse. I keep saying this every video, but we have an app called Catalyst Browse. And with Catalyst Browse, I can add the stabilization the way I want it how much I want it afterwards. The only con with Catalyst Browse is first of all you need a higher shutter speed so the footage doesn't appear blurry when it's stabilized and of course you cannot have the camera in active mode. The camera has to be in standard mode. Sony cameras have two modes, standard and active. They're both optical. It has to be either off or in the standard mode if you want to add a nice stabilization on top of it afterwards. But the thing is, if I want to do that with Panasonic, Panasonic doesn't have an app like that. So I think depends on your preference, which one is better. And when it comes to rolling shutter, there is some, but I don't think it is that bad. All right, let's talk about the resolution games we have on this camera. We have so many options when it comes to resolutions, but it feels like whatever you do, there's something happening in return. So if you want to shoot in 6K, stabilization works on every resolution, which is, which is great, and every frame rate, which is great news. But when you switch to 60 frames per second, anything about 1080p, there is an APS-C crop. And then with some settings, you can only shoot in H.264. And with some settings, you can only shoot in 420. 
So you gotta look out for that. You gotta compensate for that, which is similar to what we have on Sony a7 IV that has that resolution games as well. One nice thing about this camera is you can load your LUTs into the camera and you can even bake that LUT into the uh, footage if you don't want to apply it later while editing which makes things very convenient also when you're outputting when you're outputting to a screen you can have that lot display as well also you can see it in your monitor or electronic viewfinder this may be a bug but every morning or i don't know to me usually it's every morning when i first turn on this camera it takes a lot longer to turn on for the for the first one afterwards it turns on in a reasonable time but that that first turn on <laughs> some reason it takes longer oh what's that you want to talk about some stuff that i didn't really like about the camera okay let's do that first let's begin with the electronic viewfinder there's nothing wrong actually with the electronic viewfinder it performs as it should but there is something missing when you have the camera in your hand with the flip out screen flipped out and the screen is looking up to you if you're bringing it if you're bringing the camera close to your you know torso to film something it switches to electronic viewfinder the sensor doesn't turn off the automatic switch which is something we have on the Sony cameras and it's very convenient and I actually didn't even realize we have that on the Sony cameras until I was shooting with this camera and, and when I was holding it like this it was switching to the electric viewfinder and I had to turn it off using the button on the camera there is no sensor curtain that closes down when you want to switch lenses so you don't get dust on your sensor but this is also a preference some people like it some people don't like it so this camera doesn't have it just so you know interestingly not everything is in the main menu there are some features that are hidden for example in fn2 when you hold on fn2 it goes into a menu that has some things that i cannot find in the main menu this camera does not have the webcam mode that we have on our sony cameras where you just use a USB cable and plug the camera to your computer and you can use it as a webcam. This camera doesn't have that feature. Also, if you're using an HDMI cable and you're gonna record to an external recorder like Atomos Ninja 5, if you wanna record in RAW, there's gonna be a firmware release, a firmware update, and then it's, uh, it's not free. You have to pay for it to get the RAW output. I really don't like the way the doors open and close. They, they seem a, a little too elasticy and plasticky, if that makes sense. And while you're trying to close them, there are like two little latches on the, on the doors that you have to make sure that they just click in. But they work, but they're, they're not my favorite. And while you're recording to an external recorder, the autofocus detection turns off about 4k so you lose that eye autofocus feature while you're recording to an external uh, device which is a shame because i really enjoy using the 6k 3x2 on this camera and having this huge video that i can crop afterwards the way i want it i can use this crop it like this use it in a vertical platform like TikTok or Instagram or crop it like this and use it in my YouTube video. This is an amazing feature. I just realized something, I'm about to do beauty shots. So I connected the camera to my jib and my jib to the TV, but I'm not getting any HDMI signal on TV. So I thought maybe my cable, which works normal on Sony cameras, um, is not enough so I switched to a better cable and I'm still not getting any footage and the thing is there is no output resolution that I can change so TV is 1080p I cannot change the output resolution except when I'm in the playback mode 
when I switch to playback mode, it is there. And sometimes the playback on the camera screen is a little laggy, but this may be due to optimization and it may be optimized with a firmware update in the future. I guess that's it. That's all the complaints I have. Okay, let's talk about overheating and battery life. Because this camera has grills on it, its side where the, where the Lumix sign is, and then there's a grill underneath it. And it allows this camera to breathe a little bit more. And that is why I haven't seen the overheat sign or anything like that. I don't even know what overheat sign looks on this camera. And when it comes to battery life, I was able to shoot 6K 30 frames per second video for one hour and 30 minutes. And we just stopped recording because we ran out of battery and no overheating sign. At the end, the camera was heated up to 108 degrees Fahrenheit, if I'm not remembering it wrong, but it was still going. It has a really strong fan. When you turn the fan on to its maximum speed, you can hear it clearly. It's, it goes like bananas to cool down the camera. So if your camera is set away from you and you're wearing a mic, then it may not be a problem. Of course, no camera test is complete until we do the tunnel test over there. And for that, I'm gonna switch to auto. Yeah, let's go. Okay. Right now everything is set to auto and we are going towards the tunnel. Three, two, one, here we go. Oh yeah, we're doing good. We're doing good. I still have the focus on my eye. I think I'm in focus. Oh yeah, and we're coming out. That was vlog, now let's do it in the standard picture profile and see what that does for our tunnel test. So with the backlight, I still see the square around my face and now we're entering the tunnel I feel like it adjusted a little slower In the end, I think Lumix S5 Mark II is a great alternative to other brands and a great step forward for Panasonic joining the rest of us in the comfort of using autofocus in our videos. Even though, as you saw, it lost focus here and there a little bit, I want to think those things can be fixed and Lumix S5 Mark II can become even more reliable very soon. Well, thank you very much for watching this video and I hope you enjoyed it. This video has been so much fun to make. I have so much footage that I pity the editor Farouk that is going to have to edit this video. Today actually, right after finishing this segment. But as usual, what really matters is what you think. What did you think about Panasonic A5? Mark II. Is this a camera that you're interested in? What camera system do you use? Are you in the Sony ecosystem? Are you in the Panasonic ecosystem or Canon ecosystem? What did you think about this camera? Please let me know in the comment section below and until I see you the next time, take really good care of yourselves and ho shakal and happy 2023. Yes! We made it. Come on. Come on. Let's run towards the sun until we you know, melt. <laughs>